ask the congregation to rise. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We read responsibly our intro. It. Hear this, all peoples. Hear all the inhabitants of the world. Both low and high. Rich and poor together. Truly no man can ransom another. Or give to God the price of his life. For the ransom of their life is costly. And it can never suffice. This is the path of those who have foolish confidence. Yet after them the evil of truth of their boasts. Like sheep they are appointed for Sheol. Death shall be their shepherd. But God will ransom my soul from the power of Sheol. For he will receive me. Hear this, all peoples. Give ear all inhabitants of the world. Both low and high. Rich and poor together.
be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, grant us wisdom to recognize the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven, that we may never despair, but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for this morning is from Ecclesiastes chapters 1 and 2, selected verses. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under, the, under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool? Yet he will be master of all for which I toiled and use my wisdom under the sun. This is also vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. This is also a vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow and his work is a vexation. Even in the night, his heart does not rest. This also is vanity. There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God, for apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? For to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he has given the business of gathering and collecting, only to give to one who pleases God. This also is a vanity and a striving after the wind. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We read the gradual responsibly. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Who publish peace and bring good news of salvation. Their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. The epistles from Colossians chapter 3, the first 11 verses. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Our Gospel lesson is also the basis of our sermon in a few moments. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to myself, to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. Is someone prepared for our little lamb's message? Yeah, yeah. Hi, friends. So today's Bible reading was about treasure. And treasure is something that we love and we want to keep forever. Can you guys think of something that you love at home? Do you have a favorite toy? A favorite game? You like your silo? Okay, so that a silo is your treasure. Oh, yeah. So in our Bible reading, there was a farmer and he had so much treasure, he filled a whole barn with treasure. But then he had even more, so he built a second barn. He had two barns of treasure. And you know how the story ends? The farmer dies and the treasure just stays in his barn. It has nowhere to go. So when I was reading this Bible story, I was thinking of my grandma, because she had lots of treasure. She had a whole bedroom full of buttons and fabric and clothes and a sewing machine that filled the whole room. She did so, she did. So I want you guys to come a little bit closer. We're gonna look, I brought some for treasures with me today. So my grandma had lots and lots of treasure. And when she went to heaven, we got to go to her apartment and pick out what treasures we wanted to keep. So the first treasure, I brought a mug because we would always have Rick Beer floats in this mug, I know. Oh, I don't like coffee. <laughs> Does your mommy like coffee? And then I brought some slippers because she always would knit us slippers for Christmas. Yeah. And I have her stethoscope because she's a nurse. Isn't that cool? What else do I have? It is cool. Oh, and here's a picture of my grandma. That's my grandma. And that's my grandpa, yeah. And I even have some jewelry. Yeah, do you wanna hold that? A ring. And then I have some note cards with Bible verses. Do you wanna hold that one too? So, and you know what, I even got her wedding dress. I didn't bring the wedding dress. It didn't fit in my backpack. Do you know what my most favorite treasure of all my grandma's treasures are? What one do you think it is? Oh, that's a good answer. She was my favorite treasure. But she's not here. The picture? The slippers? The Bible verses. These are Bible verses she hand wrote and she memorized. So even though my grandma had lots and lots of treasure, just like that farmer in the Bible story, she knew that Jesus was her best treasure. Jesus was the person she loved the most and wanted to keep forever. And even though all these treasures stayed here with me, right? Who is she with right now? She's with Jesus. Jesus is the best treasure you could ever, ever have. 
And so even though you guys have the best silos, or maybe the best toys, Jesus is the most important thing. He's a person we should love and want forever. Can you guys pray with me? Okay. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Amen. of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my maker and my redeemer. Amen. The text that I selected for our sermon this morning is the gospel lesson which I shared with you before from Luke chapter 12. Fellow saints and friends of Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended Lord and Savior. I'm never sure what goes through the minds of you people when you come to church and you see the bulletin and see what the pastor has selected as the theme for his sermon today. Today our sermon theme is, Can You Get Your Car Into the Garage? You may think I'm a little bit crazy when I share with you what I'm about to share next. I live in Salina, Kansas, and when I drive through our fair community and I see a garage door standing open, I always take just a moment to take a glance to look to see what's in it and ask myself the question, I wonder if the guy can get his car into the garage and get the garage door closed. Some of us have so much stuff, our garages are full, and we can't get the car in. Now, what is some of the stuff that I see in garages? One of the first things I see is a refrigerator. Now, that's a husband's kind of thing. That's where he stores his beer to keep it cold, to leave enough room in the refrigerator in the kitchen for food so his wife can prepare him his evening meal. I have a refrigerator in my garage, and yes, I have beer in it, but I also have other important things like wax worms, meal worms, night crawlers, and other fish for bait that I can use when it's time for me to go fishing. Besides the refrigerator, what are some other things we might see in the garage? You often see equipment that is used to care for the lawns, flower beds, or perhaps even gardens. We live in a neighborhood and our lots are not very big, but I'm amazed at the homeowners who have zero radius lawnmowers that are huge, 
It only takes them a few minutes to mow their grass. That's the good news. The bad news, they take up a lot of space in the garage. They also have weed blowers, trimmers, and etc. that they have to store there as well. I also notice that garages often have shelves, sometimes in front of the car or down along the side of the car. Those shelves can be packed full of boxes, chemicals, and all sorts of other things that may be used for the care of the lawn and garden. Sometimes the garages have a boat stored in them that the family uses to take to the lake to be able to do some summer sports like skiing, tubing, fishing, and etc. Sad to say, many times we have so much stuff that we can't get our car in the garage, it has to sit on the driveway. You might be wondering, what does the preacher have in his garage? We moved to Salina in 1997, and the first thing I did, I found a contractor to build onto our house yet a third garage because of all the stuff that we had. I had a boat, and I also had a lot of woodworking tools that I wanted to store, and as a result, one vehicle for certain had to be parked on the driveway. So we built the garage, that helped, but it didn't really solve the problem. We even stored stuff above the garage door in the attic. That didn't solve the problem. So what came next? A storage unit. So now I have my boat in the storage unit. I have some wood stored in the storage unit. I have chainsaws and other equipment that I sometimes use in my hobby of building furniture. It is now possible for my wife and I both to get our car and our truck in the garage and get the garage door closed. But I'm gonna tell you, you put a 10 inch table saw a 20 inch surfacer, a 20 inch, 22 inch drum sander, a band saw, a copen saw, chop saw, rail arm saw, 12 inch joiner, a lay, plus all the sanding tools that I have, there just isn't much room. It's pretty tight fit in there. And if I should purchase another power tool, guess what? One of the vehicles will be parked on the driveway. Now, are you beginning to see how this fits in with the gospel lesson which I shared with us today? We have a sinful problem, and it's called greed. We are covetous people, and we're greedy people. Let's turn our attention now to this word of God, and may he convince us of our sinfulness, of his great love for us, and his willingness to forgive us. In our text for today, we have a man who comes to Jesus with a concern. He wants him to divide up the property between him and his brother. Evidently, someone in their family has died, most likely their father, and he thinks Jesus would be a good person to do this division. And yes, he would have been, but that's not why Jesus came. He came to provide salvation, not to be able to divide up property. And so he said to the man, who appointed me to be a judge or arbitrator between you? And then he gets at the heart of the problem that the man has. He tells him that life is more than just an abundance of possessions. And to get this point across, he tells a parable. A parable is defined as an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, and this one fits well with that meaning. Jesus begins by saying that there is a man who is already rich, but he is going to be blessed by God and even become more wealthy than he presently is. He is a farmer. His land must be the best there is. He has produced crops that has made him wealthy, and he now has a crop in a field, and the way it looks, it's a bumper crop, and he's not going to have any place to store all of his grain. So he decides that he ought to tear down his old buildings, build bigger ones, put all the grain in it, and then he says to himself that he will be able to live happily and ultimately eat, drink, and be happy forever. He just didn't plan very carefully. He had worked hard, he had planned well, and the Lord had richly blessed him. However, there was just one problem. He was greedy. He never thought of sharing what he had with anybody else. He wants to keep it all to himself. He did not plan on what was about to happen next. He died. And when he died, he couldn't control what he had stored up for himself. Someone else would take care of it. And he didn't know, as the Old Testament pointed out, whether they would be wise or a fool. Now, the question that needs to be asked yet this morning is, are there anybody but the prolies that have a problem with greed? Any of you ladies in the congregation have closets so full that you can't get another dress or pair of shoes in them? Any farmers in the congregation have expensive equipment that's parked outside and you can't get it in your buildings because they're full of other expensive equipment? Any children who have started their Christmas list, if I'd have done the children's sermon, I'd have asked you this question. What happens 140 days from now? Christmas. 
We ought to be getting ready for it, shouldn't we? Making out our list of things that we want. That's the kind of people we are. Do all of us struggle from, with greed from time to time? If we're honest with that question, we're going to have to answer it positively. Sad to say we have heard about families who have gone through battles between brothers and sisters trying to divide up the property that belonged to their parents after they have passed away. Others of us may never be content with what we have. We're always wanting something more, something better, something new. Yes, our garages may be full and running over and our cars and trucks may be parked on the driveway. They'll have to sit there. So what's the solution to our problem <coughs> of greed? Jesus Christ is the solution to our sinful problem of greed. First of all, we need to acknowledge that we are sinners and that we are greedy. Secondly, we need to confess those sins to God. And thirdly, we need to hear the good news of the gospel that he will indeed forgive us and change our lives. Now, none of you have asked the question, well, Pastor, what can we have and not be greedy? Do we have to be paupers and just live on the bare essentials of life? Can't we have some nice things once in a while? Is it always wrong to want something nice? How many of you were confirmed in the Lutheran Church? Good. You ought to know the answer to that question. We covered it in confirmation instruction as we looked at the Lord's Prayer. Which petition of the Lord's Prayer deals with this? The fourth. And what's the fourth petition? Give us this day our daily bread. I went and looked at the catechism to see what Luther had to say about it, and this is what he covered in that section. God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to evil people, but we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. And then he says, what is meant by daily bread? Remember this? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the likes. Do you remember studying that back when you were in confirmation? Okay. I read that whole section on the fourth petition and I came across the following quote that caught me off guard. It says, take away your daily bread, namely the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the homes that shelter us, the government that protects us, and we die. So these things are so important. How come we take them for granted? And how come we don't take God's time to thank God for what he has provided for us? I like to ask the following question. When's the last time you thank God for warm water when you get ready to crawl into the shower, either to clean it up to come to church or to get ready to go to bed? That's a blessing from God. When's the last time you thank God that when you got in your vehicle, your car or truck, and turned the key or pushed the button that it started and ran and got you from point A to point B and back again safely? We have lots and lots of different things. And speaking for myself, my garage is full of lots of fishing equipment. I could take 20 of you with me on a day to go fishing. You'd all have poles and tackle, and I'd still have poles for myself. We have been richly blessed. It seems as though failing to be thankful for our blessings falls right in behind the sin of greed. Now, the catechism on the fourth petition really points out that we ought to be thankful for all the things God gives us, and it pointed me back to the first article of the Apostles' Creed, and you might remember this section where Luther says, God gives us these things, clothing, shoes, food, drink, house, home, wife, children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger, guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. And how do we conclude that section? This is most certainly true. Have we seen our sinfulness of greed? Now comes the good news of the gospel. Jesus loves us very, very much. How much does he love us? He left his home in heaven because he wasn't greedy. He left everything and came down here for you and me. And what did he do? He went to Calvary's cross and extended his arms on that cross and bled and died to pay for all our sins of thanklessness and greed. And he did that by his life, death, and his resurrection. He washed us clean and he fills our heart with his love so that our lives can be changed so that we can be, first of all, thankful for the blessings he showers upon us. Secondly, so we can be satisfied with what we have. 
and thirdly, so that we don't have to live a life of greed. Now, in conclusion, the next time you go through town and look and see a garage door standing open, you might just take a glance to see what's in there. You might even remember this sermon about wondering if they can get their car in and get the garage door shut. It might also move us to get down on our knees and thank God for the many blessings he showers upon us each and every day. Let us be satisfied, let us be thankful, and may we not be greedy people. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The announcements should appear up here. Please take time to look at them. I believe also this is your last day for taking pictures. So if you need to do that, you should stick around the front. And this time the offering will be brought forward. Please stand and we'll sing the offertory. our privilege to confess our Christian faith, we make use of the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and who was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. <coughs> and, it's, <coughs> and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. All is vanity, O Lord. Without the grace and succor of your word and spirit, guard our hearts against pride and arrogance and a life rich in things but poor in spirit. Grant to us wise hearts that we may love rightly all that you have made and use them all for your purpose and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guard your church, O Lord, the people of your own possession, and give to her honorable and noble men for the office of holy ministry, and gracious and devout men and women commissioned for the teaching, arts, and work of charity within your church. Make us rich in the treasures of your grace that will never disappoint us, that we may give generously towards those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that in our lives together we might show the love of Christ to one another. Give all husbands and wives fidelity in their vows and promises. Help all parents teach their children to know and love the Lord. Guide all single adults that they might find fulfillment in their service to others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
O Lord, kingdoms rise and fall, and leaders are raised up and brought low by your will. Grant our nation and its leaders humility before you, that we might recognize the vanity of our plans and so be ready to rejoice and give thanks for your every good gift in the days that you give us under the sun. Lord, in your mercy. Be near to the suffering, the dying, and the grieving, especially those we name and also those we name in our hearts. Health concerns be with Lily, Darlene, Erna, Nyla, Doris, Pat, Janice, Wanda, and Mary, Ginger, Shirley, Shanda, Heather, Mary Lou, Ann, and Connie. Also be with Erna who has COVID. Give safe travel to Pastor Schmidt and his family and a restful vacation. Be with Bill, Denny, Dave, Anna, Lauren, Carol, Logan Winter's grandmother, Shirley, all those who battle cancer, especially Heather and Sherry, all those affected by the floodwaters and fires that race across our country. Give safe travel to exchange students. Be with a family in need a father who needs a successful medical procedure, a daughter that she may have a healthy pregnancy. Be with our military families, and we especially remember Dusty, David, Dane, Andrew, Caden, Spencer, and Nathan. Be with all those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Help us to give thanks for your blessings. Sustain them in the truth that their lives are even now hidden with Christ in God, and that when he appears, they will also appear with him in glory. Give them compassion and skillful doctors and nurses that their sufferings may be alleviated and their minds and bodies return to health. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have seated your Christ at your right hand and surrounded him with all those that he has led out of the great tribulation. We thank you for the peace and the rest you have given them in him. And we pray that you would one day deliver us by the, his hand into the paradise he has won for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Answer all doubts and fears, O Lord, with confidence in your word and sacraments, that by these means of grace we may be kept in holiness and guarded from temptation and despair until the day when you bring all things to their perfect fulfillment and we are delivered to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us the everlasting life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. the Lord's Prayer together and we sing its conclusion together as well. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. the blood of the Lamb poured out for you on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, shed for you for the remission of all your sins. May the Lord Jesus bless and keep you in your baptismal grace and the life of the last thing. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ poured out for you for the remission of all your sins. Lamb, 
Lord, out here on the cross. May the Lord please bless and keep your baptismal grace and life everlasting. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the remission of all your sins. May the Lord Jesus bless and keep you in your baptismal grace and life everlasting. The blood of Christ, may God bless and keep you in your baptismal grace and life everlasting. Take and drink the blood of Jesus shed for you on Calvary's cross for the remission of all your sins. The blood of Jesus shed for you. May the Lord Jesus bless and keep you in your baptismal grace and the life everlasting. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Take and drink the blood of Jesus poured out for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The blood of the Lamb shed for you for the remission of all your sins. and drink. This is the blood of the Lamb poured out for you on Calvary's cross for the remission of all your sins. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless and keep you in your baptismal grace and the life everlasting. Amen. The blood of the Lamb poured out for you. May Jesus keep you in your baptismal grace and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ poured out for you for the remission of of all your sins. The blood of the Lamb shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of all your sins. I'll be right back. Take and drink the blood of the Lamb poured out for you on the cross for the remission of all your sin. Thank you. May Christ's body and blood strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. give thanks unto the Lord for he is good let us pray we give thanks to you almighty God that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift 
and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated. We conclude by singing our final hymn, Go, my children, with my blessing. Thank you.